most people would have quit on a long time ago. I've got a kid right here that in the blue, he's 6'5". Two years ago, I went to give him two cents for that kid. All I seen him do when he'd sit and warm up, he'd have his legs crossed, and all I could tell is he sat and played Nintendo every single day of the week. And what he has done, you know, we do a great job, I think, of our older guys grooming our younger guys, bringing them along, okay? What we do on a Saturday morning for our youth football, uh, Caledonia actually, Carl kind of started that around the area, but for some reason, we don't really get into any of the Pop Warner leagues anywhere. But we have, our kids do on Saturday morning, our seniors go, and we have them come in after a game, you know, lift, get the acid out of them, and they watch film, and then they go teach our younger kids for an hour and a half, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, any first graders that want to come out. And we have those kids come out and teach those young kids so that they are bought in. Friday nights, the fun thing is we let them kids go play at halftime, and you know, they get their 20 minutes with their pads on or playing touch football, and they're out there under the big lights, and they get to be a part of the big game and the big halftime show. So that's something that we do, and because we haven't quit on kids like this, you know, he's not going to be maybe a phenomenal D1 athlete, but he's going to be all we got, and we have to turn him into an athlete, and, and he's getting there. I've got little, I've got little youth, uh, youth wrestler guys that have to show up at six o'clock. They live down the street. Uh, basketball players coming in during the morning. Both of those kids. I've got a kid that's not out for any sports. That you know, he's just going nuts to, and hungry. For our defensive back drills, what I've done last year was the first year that I really implemented this and changed this completely. Um, three years ago, I put in a lot of these defensive back drills. And in our defense, we play a lot of cover three, and basically turns into cover one instantly. Um, we, you know, we've got it all in four, three, three, five, three, four. I think they're all the same, personally. Or at least I try to coach them that way. And what we've done is have our outside linebackers, D line, D ends, um, D backs. I have all them guys do these drills because it's doing what? It's making them a better football player. If you can have more better football, you know, more football players that are better overall, you're going to win more football games, in my opinion back on this one one more time. I was pretty impressed with these two girls. She was actually our best backpedaler. I might have to sign her up for safety, I think. Um, what we're focusing on when we when I got these guys backpedaling, this was the worst looking drill out of any D-backs in here. When we're uh, backpedaling, our guys are locked, you know, chest over knees, everybody stands. But what I'm working on when I'm backpedaling is that arm carry rotation where our arms are just angled in. So that as we sprint, uh, go out on the flats, and that'll be on this next drill, basically what we're doing is we're able to lock our shoulders, and that continuous motion keeps our feet driving. Okay? There's no slipping, there's no stopping if we're doing things correctly. For this drill, I've probably played this a couple times. I think this is one of my favorite drills for outside linebackers. Um, everybody watch the left foot. Those two are good. Now watch Z. What we're working on is getting that foot to turn inside. And how many kids don't you have when they're going on the flats? You see this. You see that foot dragging. Okay. What we're teaching our kids to do is get that foot turned and boom. Their shoulders are rotating. I want to play that one one more time. It's probably my favorite outside linebacker drill to do. That one does it pretty good. And you didn't even play defense for us. But you did the drills every day. Vince, he was a star middle linebacker for us this year. Now Zeke, he's a DN. He don't ever do it. But I do have our DNs cover the flats at times. <coughs> I'm also going to point out our last guy. And I don't know if I can, can pause it or not on him. Everybody see how he just tipped over when he went up. Ben's a pretty powerful young man. He's, he worked hard, and basically he had too much torque in his shoulders, lost his planning, and actually tipped over. Okay, he actually got out of control. So that that shoulder rotation actually forced him to get it, go over. So that's the body control that that teaches. And I thought that was just a, a good point to show you on that. Overall, I just thought we did we did okay on this. Um, 
one thing you can look, Mitch is one that and I can't quite get him fixed. But we'll say is they're getting long. When they're, when they're coming out, you're watching the Zeke here is the same way. He has rotation. He gets really long. Okay? When you're in short space as a D-back, we want to keep that shoulder rotation short. Okay? So, you know, none of those guys are defensive backs. You can see we want to keep continuous shoulder rotation throughout the drill. They're basically sprinting. We want them based up in a good stance. Which I'm going to jack them up the next time we go here because they're not doing a very good job. And that's what's great about this. I really enjoyed actually producing this little quick video because going through that camera's eye, or you know, you got an iPad or whatever, I'm not a technology guy whatsoever, but you can really focus in and, and see um, the mistakes that the kids are making through the camera lens. As they switch into that, what I'd like to see out of this is more of that arm carry rotation. And another thing I'm always looking for, when our guys are sprinting, I shouldn't see their heads going like this. Okay? I like that even mechanical. You know what? It kind of bugged me, and I can't pick on the Gophers D-back coach. I hope he's not in here. But I went up and watched them, of course, a few times with Isaac being up there. And I see them guys, and what they're doing is they're, they're breaking and they're pounding the bongos, basically, as quick as they can. And it's just driving. Mean, their D-backs are playing phenomenal. I mean, they're, you'll get the kids that, you know, you watch a world-class sprinter. A lot of times, they, their shoulder rotation looks like that. And what I see them guys doing is they're just pounding the ground on that. My philosophy is to turn our shoulder rotation as quick as possible for our defensive backs to get them to break as quick as possible. By all means, I don't have the world's greatest defensive backs. It's got kids that work hard and get to be ball hawks. This is one of my second favorite drills for all sports. Basically what we're doing here, you know, you got a corner, And he's basically lined up on the wide out. That guy's beat him to the inside, faked him out, and he's beat. There's no way his hips are pinned. What I'm teaching my guys to do is come around the basketball arch, and no matter what, wherever, whatever route that guy runs, unless maybe a close corner or something like that, he is going to come out and rotate, and he's going to be on top of it. Okay? So wherever that guy goes, he's going to come around that arch, and he's going to be on top of that receiver. He may still catch the ball, but he's not going to get a touchdown as long as we make, make the tackle. I'm going to rewind that one again. So no matter where that receiver would go, he's going to, he's going to match it. So if he's running a post, a dig, he's going to come out on top. Okay? If, if he would come out and he would break out, as he comes around, he's going to hit the brakes, boom. He's going to turn his shoulders and he's going to cut back over the top on a, on a flight drop. So we actually are practicing getting beat here, which is going to happen in all, in all sports. I love this. Uh, one of our middle linebackers from last year that's a guard for us, he says he uses this on the basketball court almost every game at some point. This drill we did not work on quite as much as I like, and uh, mainly because it's at the end of the sheet. And I know how it is as coaches, you don't find as much time in practice as you would like. But I really like this. You can really see how our guys are leaning and staying at full speed. 
Okay, that's that line and just that little lean as you're coming around our speed curves, which is another part of our, our speed, more, uh, speed drills that we do, uh, is, is very beneficial. Any drills anybody would like to see again? Um, any questions on any of them? Do you have these available? Um, I do, I've got, a, this is basically what I get. This is what Coach Bass get. I got a whole bunch of lines drawn up. I'm sure sit down with you afterwards. And, you know, I'll sure print them or I can scan them and email them to you. See if you give me your email address and, and show you how to do that. You know, you basically got to research speed. You know, Coach Frickty, he, he's the speed Nazi at, our, at Caledonia. These guys are the strength. I'm kind of the psychology guy that brings the whole mold together, I hope, and defensively tries to X and O and stop everybody. So that's kind of, you know, our, our triangle that we've created in Caledonia. And of course, I got great assistants all over the place that, have, that uh, just keep plugging in and try to 90. 5% of them are former Caledonia football players. So it's really an in-house atmosphere. Um, any other questions? 